Welcome to Honest Whispers Unboxing and Review. On this video I'll be unboxing and reviewing DC Universe movie Wonder Woman Bloodlines Best Buy exclusive figure from the limited edition gift set. This was released today October 22nd 2019. This actually comes with the 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray and a digital code. I actually did buy the Target exclusive Blu-ray DVD and digital code that comes with the collectible steelbook but I decided I'm gonna open and keep the one from Best Buy due to the figure which I'll go ahead and unbox right now and basically it's the same artwork front and back and details as well so just kinda show you that and that right there but I'll be using this, the target as the background, I'll be opening this. And for something like this, the box is kind of fragile, so usually um, I always try to pick out the best looking box. And of course, I look at the figure, the way it's painted. And I have seen some flaws on certain paint jobs. Uh, this was one of the best. At the same time, this was a limited edition of 19... 1,941 out of 9,500 so for me I thought that was kind of like a nice little um, coincidence since Wonder Woman first came out in 1941 so usually when I open these uh, I don't want to scratch the box itself so basically what I'll do is I'll probably pick something out right here like a little edge I'll pull it so that I have enough slack and then I'll just punch in the knife so that the knife will never be touching the box and then what I'll do is I'll make a kind of a slit so that I could pretty much rip the rest of the plastic wrapping so that I don't damage the box itself because this box is really um, thin so uh, easy to dent easy to uh, crease and I just continue ripping out the wrapper until I have it completely unwrapped So of course now it stands a little better here. So pretty much same box as the old Best Buy exclusive DVD and figure set. And the box does have the limited edition sticker. I'm pretty sure the figure doesn't, although when I look at it, it does have a base, so maybe it might have something on the bottom. Now, because it was plastic wrapped, there's no tape here. Usually, it wasn't... Older ones weren't plastic wrapped, but had a sticker. So, this one, I'm actually liking it without the sticker. Although, this part is pretty much impossible to open without making a crease here inside the tab. I want to see if I could pull it out but it looks like it's tucked in there pretty nicely. Maybe if I flatten this and then pull it. No, it's not going to work. So unfortunately I'm just going to have to uh, pull it in the middle. It is going to create a crease inside here but I don't want the crease to go on the top so I'm just going to do it very carefully here. Maybe if I could try to side. You know, I don't want to rip here either. So it looks like I'm, I have no choice but to make a crease. So there it is. It's already kind of creasing right there. So I just want to make sure it pops out. So this is what I mean when, when, when you get the tabs here stuck. There's really no choice you can do other than create this 
for having your crease right here. So that cut that could be a telltale sign when you're buying something new or somebody says it's new and yet you see a crease like that then it's actually been opened before. But as intended, there's no crease on the top. So once I close the box, you won't be able to see this crease anymore. So I'm going to... Well, that's inconvenient because the top part is glued. That means the only way to get the figure out is for me to open it through the bottom. So in a way, there was no point in opening the top. Which means now I'm going to have to create that crease, same crease on the bottom as well. So, or actually, you know what? The top part wasn't latched in. So with this, I could just kind of slide out the edge, avoid it making a crease, which means I could have avoided making a crease on the top in the first place. So the DVD, it comes with the sleeve, which I'm just going to keep in here for now, since I'm not reviewing the DVD, I'm reviewing the figure. And the figure comes in a nice little plastic case. going to reclose this try not to create a crease and I'm not going to push it all the way in so that the corners don't get latched in and what I'll do is I'll go ahead and bring this up so that I can use this in the back or as a background and there it is. One quick turn around the way it's set up. It doesn't look like it's taped or anything. Two plates kind of, it kind of slides out there. And I do want to take this out without damaging the box. So I probably want to use the best piece I can grab which is the leg or the base yes yeah, so I'll put that on the side so unlike the older figures where it had some usually like five points of articulations one neck two arms and then two legs this one is like in a permanent pose, which I kind of like. Um, that way you don't see any weird seam lines or anything like that. It looks like the arms are movable, so it might have... Let me double check here. Mm, nope. It is not, so... It might have been assembled separately, but it looks definitely uh, permanently affixed or glued. And it is possible. Yeah, I don't want to put too much stress on it. You know, it is quite flexible, and I'm fine with the pose as is. So let me go ahead and take this out. I'll do a bit of a close-up as I review this. Um, first time seeing this out of the box. And usually I just do six categories. First is design, which basically covers the look, the concept, and the pose. And for this, the pose uh, isn't bad. I like the way, uh, again, she is. she does come with the base. It's not numbered, but then it has all the details. 
basically uh, the date, uh, things like that, more like copyright stuff. So, design, I haven't seen the movie yet, which I'm probably going to do as soon as I finish this. But it is kind of, uh, I won't say it's a typical Wonder Woman stance, but it is a typical fighting stance type of um, pose. I like the overall look. Proportions seem, uh, well not realistic, but uh, definitely true to the way she's drawn in the animated films. And again, I like the base, the way it gives her stability. And there's really no other figures to compare this with. So for me, I uh, really can't say there's anything wrong with the design or anything wrong with the uh, pose. What I think the pose, the way her left arm is just kind of close to her body doesn't look quite right. I think um, if the arm was a little bit more out here into the front, and I'm sure that's due to the way they uh, wanted her kind of small so that she was, you know, packageable in a DVD box set. Regardless, uh, for a fighting pose, it looks a bit awkward. Just the way her left arm is so closely... Uh, just close to her uh, body and I know that's a bit of an opinion or that's a bit subjective but then that's just coming from you know just studying or knowing a bit of martial arts so but once you look at it in real life like it really does look a bit awkward as far as, like if I show you the top view as well. So it doesn't look quite dynamic. Uh, I guess it kind of looks like maybe if it was more of a boxing type of stance, which kind of reminds me more of than like a martial arts stand uh, where it be whatever you know the style it might be you know karate or hakido or taekwondo it i think if the arm was a little bit more raised it would be better so the design i'm just going to give it a 9 out of 10 it's close to perfect but not quite perfect i guess that's the way i could you could put it uh, next category is sculpting. Sculpting pretty much covers the details, the execution of the mold, and quality of the mold itself. And as far as uh, details go, I like the details of the hair. Of course, it's based on the animation, the look from the animation. So I, I like how it's not too detailed, but you do have some details like in the hair the strands of the hair is the ponytail and looking at it closely it looks like this is a looks like it was uh, molded separately but then uh, assembled because I do see a seam line or a crease line well, not a crease line, but a seam line between the hair and the body. So, other than that, um, let's see if I could see some molding issues here. Because so I'm seeing that little... Now, it looks like it's supposed to be the bracelet, the design of the bracelet. So, when I look at this side... You do see those creased lines on the top edge. Uh, then you see some lines on her breastplate. You could see some defined abs 
repress and then let me see a better better close up of the butt they didn't like the butt's okay you can see a bit of a butt crack on the top area just from the reflection of the light but nothing too defined and then her knee pads and then here's where you see some flaws right there on the shin that's probably where the two uh, mold the plates of the cast were put together which tend to create that line you don't see that here on the left shin and I guess you kind of do see a line I do see a faint line going up and down here all the way through the thigh but this part they didn't really uh, shave it off as good or, or as smoothly as the other side but you know for a figure this big or small I should say which is approximately four inches I see the sculpting isn't bad that's why I'm gonna give this a nine out of ten not quite perfect but not that bad you know what the face I think the face could have been better just looks a bit round and now I'm seeing a bit of a molding issue here on her cheek you can see that her right cheek is smooth and then her left cheek you can see that line it's it's a bit um I thought that's where the casting is, but then you could you could see uh, I don't know it's a bit rough, and then even her nose right there it's kind of no bit rough, and as far as the I guess this could be on the design, but as far as the sculpting goes, you could see how her the nose of her bridge to me it just seems a bit too. Um, it's too uh high or or not high but it just sticks out too much so it kind of reminds me of um jasmine rather than wonder woman and then the way her mouth and then the chin just kind of narrows down so much it's starting to remind me of like i don't know some I don't want to say deformed figure or anything but then uh, what I'm trying to say is like uh, like right here just the way her cheek from her cheek to her chin it narrows down so much it reminds me of kind of like um, Lois from Family Guy the way you know it's really shaped out Or from here, it looks like she's like puffing her cheeks a bit. So, yeah, rather than that, I'm just going to go with the sculpting. I'm going to give it an 8 rather than a 9. I think it could have been better. So when I look at other areas, like the fingers for something this small, it's actually done pretty well. Although this part, that would be some molding issues as well. So again, this is, I'm kind of doing this just off the, you know, just from first look. So I'm going to have to adjust the score again. I'm going to do a 7 out of 10 on the sculpting. So sculpting score, 7 out of 10. Next category is painting, which basically covers, uh, or next category is colors, you could say, 
which covers the quality of the paint, accuracy of the colors, and quality of the paint application. And this one, when I was comparing with other figures, there weren't really any cross-eyed or googly-eyed, you know, issues. All the eyes did seem pretty much straight. Now, the star on her tiara, if I can get this focused here. Okay, the stars on the tiara uh, wasn't really an issue, but you could see here, if you line it up with the nose, it's not as it's not as aligned as I wanted it to you can see it's a little bit to her right of her nose if I go straight up and down her that line of symmetry then you can see that the star is a little bit offset I've seen other stars where it's just like half of it only the bottom half is drawn so it's it's kind of like looks like it's inside her hair somewhere the colors seem accurate i do like the overall look of the coloring or the paint it does have some why well, it doesn't really have a gloss finish it seems to me the plastic i mean her hair has this shiny look to it And at least the red does seem like it has some gloss to it. While the blue, you can see right here, is like a matte finish. Those white stars look like it's imprinted way too perfect to be hand painted. But you do see some flaws here on the paint application. It's minor and I'm looking at it very closely uh, you know what that might not even be a paint issue that might be just the showing the inside edge of the arm as I said uh, I can't move them it's not articulated but it definitely looks like it was molded separately and then uh, assembled or glued together but here I do see some bleeding here, gray. Or was that reflection? It looks like it might have been reflection. Because I've seen the gray kind of bleed. Right here it looks like. Over her right breast a little bit. You can see a little bit of gray over the right breast now other ones I've seen were on the panty line there was some skin color that was painted onto the panty so I thought that was uh, something I, I definitely didn't want to buy so I wanted to be a little bit more picky with that or you might have like a rough it's it's not like a nice straight line and it's almost like roughed up like for instance right here on the top of a right I guess you could say stocking all right knee high boot basically you can see how the line right here is a bit rough you don't get that nice straight flat straight edge kind of compared to here where you could see the blue bleeding in a little bit or you could see here it looks like some of the blue's been chipped off or smeared well I've seen that on other figures on on the front of her panty line right there of her legs so that's something you might want to watch out for back looks great And then here, that's actually, it looks like reflection, but you know what? That is actually gray paint or silver paint from her knee pad, the right knee pad. 
So looking at this, it looks like to me just the way those lines aren't clear. You know what? It looks like they used um like a shield technique and rather than brush strokes they used like a spray. So that's why you could see how the edge you, there, the spray kind of got in there and then that's why you, you see it rather than a mist stroke you see like dots so the guard wasn't there as tightly as it should now right here looks like a really bad brush stroke that's probably the worst paint flaw of this figure here is that right there the way it just sticks out like a sore thumb this ankle nothing and it, well you know what I mean you got some faded lines here but really isn't as bad as this and of course that's an area you couldn't quite see inside the box or at least for me I couldn't see it inside the box just because it gets kind of um, dark in that if the for instance if it was in there it, it's slightly covered by this part of the box and then it gets very dark so you know you're trying to hold it up in the light and the angle just isn't there so for something this small it's not bad but I've seen uh, some figures even at this size painted very nicely um, so it's not like it's impossible especially some of the Japanese Gashapon figures that I've owned or reviewed uh, so in those in comparison to that uh, it could have been better but overall it's not bad and again I've seen worse too so you might have ended up with something worse than this so definitely you do want to make sure you get one with a pretty good paint um, ap application or something that's nicely painted or at least the quality wise so for this one I give the color score a slight above average 6 out of 10 next category is packaging and for the packaging this one it comes in a gift set the DVD is in the box uh, they did change it so that the uh, I guess no, I'm not gonna be able to put that on the top or I could leave it flat and then review it like this no point in turning it around uh, simple box really if I had a choice I would probably keep the steel bookcase so if you didn't if you don't really like the figure I would definitely recommend target exclusive but this one you can see on the bottom here it is it does have the nice limited edition sticker uh, inside the box you can't really see the DVD it is cut out there in the hole but that's st strictly for the figure and for the box on the back pretty much uh, same thing details about the movie the extra special features and for this one because it's 4k ultra it has some details about that and then the digital code now just to compare with this one this is the steel book this one doesn't have 4k but just blu-ray and digital code so it's the same minus that 4k box the 4k ultra HD box to be precise so the box it is a bit flimsy you can uh, a lot of times you're going to end up with something that might be creased or dented or dinged up uh, this one wasn't too bad 
the only thing I had or I saw here in the box when I bought was right here somewhere. Oh, it's on this side. I can't even really see it. It's so small. Well, regardless, it's a nice design overall. Really can't go wrong with it, but it isn't that sturdy, so I give the packaging score an 8 out of 10. So, fifth category is value, which basically covers the uh, the re suggested retail price versus the value itself, or uh, I guess aftermarket price versus the value, or suggested retail price versus the aftermarket value. Well, this did just come out today, and in recent years. The exclusive box with the free figure or exclusive figure hasn't really been going up in prices lately. The original ones did and I have actually sold ones uh, for a bit higher than the original price. This one when I went there to buy today I even saw the death of Superman uh, with the exclusive I believe it was the figure of steel and that was still in the store so and it's been a while since that came out so I guess it it depends on the film too or the figure this one the last Wonder Woman one the when it came out the figure did um, kind of raise its value because technically the figure price wise the figure is kind of free because if you bought a 4k one you're gonna pay the same price this was at $34.99 I bought it Best Buy always has like a you know first week sale when it's or has it on sale for the first week that it's released so I got this for $29.99 and just from experience I would say it might it'll probably go up a little bit in value once it's all completely sold out but probably not too much so I'm probably uh, guess around you might be able to fetch like another five ten dollars maybe a couple years from now so it really depends but to me this figure is kind of unique and it is one of the first ones where it doesn't have points of articulations and it is uh, in a permanent pose like this so for me I would say you know what I wouldn't be surprised if it if you know a couple years from now or at least a few years from now you could probably sell this for about you know forty forty five dollars maybe up to up towards to fifty dollars and it is all a guess but as far as the figure overall look the way it you know it's colored and everything i do like it so i i definitely put value on this as an extra and that's why for me i give the value score uh, a slight above average seven out of ten So final categories overall, which accumulates the five prior uh, categories, design, sculpting, colors, packaging, and value. And this one, as I said, originally I wanted the steel bookcase. But then once I saw this figure, I definitely liked the overall look of it. Now, I always prefer the traditional Wonder Woman costume design over this, but I actually do like this more than Rebirth, where she has what I always call the Xena skirt. Uh, so for me, and this design isn't too bad. It's kind of reminds me of um, Psylocke's costume in a way, uh, just with the uh, mock leotard, mock neck leotard kind of look. 
uh, and then her sort of like the opera gloves and the thigh high and looks like stockings rather than thigh high boots just the way it kind of clenches onto her skin or legs so I like that overall costume design or look and so far you know it's hard to name count off the top of my head but I believe since Justice League War was when she started appearing in this particular costume so it's already been a few movies like Justice League versus Teen Titans uh, Death of Superman and of course I believe um, I think it was like Doomsday well not it was what well, Death of Superman that was Doomsday and then there was one uh, Reign Reign of the Superman so already at least a few films that she's been in this particular design uh, so kind of grows into it I don't know how long it'll last of course but then the more films or comics or whatever not that she's appeared this in comics but the more films she appears in this uh, the more value it can have or at least more demand so like I said, for me, I've already kind of grown into this look and kind of has, you know, kind of like it myself, even though I will always prefer the traditional look. So that's why I give the overall score a 7 out of 10. So to recap, design 9 out of 10. Sculpting, 8 out of 10. I think I fixed it to 7. If I had to go right now, I, I would go with 7. Due to the few flaws here. Like I said, the the way the face is sculpted. Just looks like a, a very cartoony, like a comedy cartoon face. Rather than some kind of serious action cartoon face and then as I mentioned there were some molding issues here right hand shoulder legs so yeah I would I would definitely go with seven so to recap to re-recap Design, 9 out of 10. Sculpting, 7 out of 10. Colors, 6 out of 10. Packaging, 8 out of 10. Value, uh, 7 out of 10. And overall, 7 out of 10. Thank you for watching. Until next time. Continue reading the King James Version Bible and eat your vitamin C's daily.